Hey everybody, it's Mike aka That Reseller Guy coming to you with another video today. Today I got a little bit of everything for you. I think this one might be a little bit of a longer video if I do it all correctly. Don't forget to do any of the stuff that I was thinking about. Uh, but I got some sales to go over on eBay. Uh, I did sell a few things on Amazon, but uh, now those have already shipped out over the last couple days. Biggest sales month for Amazon so far. Obviously it's December, so that would that's to be expected, uh, but nothing too exciting. I think I've sold like maybe $300 off of Amazon this month. Yeah, like I said, not a big part of my business. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I got some eBay sales to go over. I'm going to show you some items that I picked up recently. I'm going to go over a tale of three football helmets, and uh, then I'm going to show you what, the items that I'm going to take out to my collectibles booth tomorrow. So let's get going. All right, let's get into the eBay sales first. Uh, sold a few cool things today, and I'm going to show you an item that I sold yesterday. And this is kind of an interesting thing. On Tuesday, I kind of have my weekly route kind of worked out, unless something comes up like today that messes things up. Uh, Tuesdays, I have a little route through Chandler that I take. Wednesdays, I go up through Scottsdale and kind of work my way back. Thursday is kind of up in the air because sometimes I go to estate sales on Thursday. But today, Thursday, as I'm making this video, uh, my wife has my car. Her car's in the shop. She took my car to work. So I'm here without a car today. So I am stuck at home. So uh, that's why I made sure that I'm going to get this video out. And, you know, it can be a little bit longer one because I got a little bit of extra time today. Uh, I'm going to take my orders to the post office late today, probably after they close. But at least that way I can get them there and they can get processing on them uh, early in the morning. Uh, so yeah, uh, as I'm stuck here at home today, you're stuck with me for a longer video. Uh, let's get into the sales. First up, a lot of several sports related items. Oh, actually, no, I have to I have to flip back because I was going to tell you about that other item. I get I get distracted really easy when I'm doing these videos. You all know that. Uh, so I went to my local uh, thrift store, my local Deseret Indus Industries thrift store, I call them DI. Uh, I usually go there Tuesday morning and uh, I found a couple of these crafting mat cutters. So uh, I, they're already shipped out, so I can't show them to you. I'll show you the pop-up uh, of my eBay sale. So when I scanned it for Amazon, it showed that I couldn't sell that, that I was restricted. But anytime that Amazon gives you that option, the little dot, option down at the bottom that says apply to sell. I always try to do that if I have one of the items and I think it's gonna be worth it. I actually got proved right away. A lot of times uh, because of my sales history and that I've been on Amazon for quite a while, it does approve me for quite a few things that, uh, you know, it shows that you're restricted on. A lot of people don't even try to apply for them. If it's worth the profit wise, I'll do it. And this one was. So it was an item that I bought for $3. I bought two of them, two of these mat cutters. And on Amazon, the price was pretty high. It was about $70, but I thought that might have been a little bit inflated looking at the sales history on those. So I priced mine at $59.99, plus uh, Amazon gives you a little bit for shipping. It doesn't cover all the shipping. Uh, I think it gave me like 5 or $6 for shipping. Uh, if you're on the pro plan, you can change your shipping prices, but I'm not on the pro, pro plan anymore. Uh, I also listed one on Amazon. So I had two. I, I didn't know wh where they would sell quicker. There was a little bit of sales history on both sites, but nothing fantastic. So I put one out on Amazon for $60 plus shipping. I put one on eBay for $32, I think. I think it was $32. You'll see that my eBay pop up uh, with the exact price was plus shipping. Now I was able to charge a little more shipping, more appropriate shipping charge uh, on eBay. And they both sold literally within 12 hours, I think. Yeah, so I, I'm happy that, I mean, I made fantastic profit. I paid $3 each. Sold one for 30 ish dollars and the other one for $60. Now, obviously, I would have liked to sell them both on Amazon for $60 a piece, but I didn't know that they were going to sell this quick because really the sales history wasn't there for it. Maybe mine were just better than the other listings. I don't know why. Maybe eBay funneled the, the viewers to my listings and all that. I don't know. Either way, it was literally $100 in sales from those two items. And, uh, yeah, I didn't even know I'd be able to sell on Amazon. So uh, really great. I love when stuff like that happens. That's the stuff you love as a reseller when you go and you buy something and you flip it quick and you make good money on it. Ooh, you, you wish you could find 100 of those items a day. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite that easy. Otherwise, the whole world would be doing this. Uh, but we're, now we're going to get back to eBay, the stuff that I still have to ship out today. One card, one card sale. And I'm going to tell stories probably with everything that I picked up today. You're, you're stuck with me for the whole, whole well, not the whole day. I could just turn on, turn this on and do a live stream and just have you watch me work in my office the entire day. Uh, nobody wants to see that. Uh, so anyway, this came from a bargain box at a card show, the Frankenstein card show over in Southern California. I say, say card show. It's a big collectible show. 
uh, out of a $2 box. So this is John Navarre. Uh, he was the quarterback for Michigan. This card is from 2004, autograph rookie card. He was also drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. It was pretty much a flop in the league. And uh, I, I hate to say people are flops when they come into the NFL. You are a very skilled, talented person if you even make it into a training camp for the NFL. So I, I don't want to talk down anybody that's made it to an NFL training camp. So John Navarre, a quarterback, did not have a great career in the NFL. How about we say that? And uh, this sold for $10, $9.99 plus shipping. It can go out eBay standard envelope. That one's good. The next out, I finally sold these. I had bought a bunch of these golf balls at a little local uh, little local mom and pop thrift store type place, not at, not at one of the main chains. And most of them had sold fairly quickly, but for whatever reason, this last batch sat around for quite a while, maybe because it's football season. But these are all golf balls with different teams on them. Now, maybe if I had all the same team, they would have sold quicker. Like if these were all the Packers or all the 49ers, whatever, it would have sold quicker. But these are all different teams. So we got the Redskins, Giants, Bengals. I think there's Bills. There's Browns, 49ers, and some other teams. If you want to look at the pop-up, see all the teams, you can freeze frame and, and you know, take a look at it. Uh, I bought these three for a dollar. That's what they had them at, the, at that store for. I bought a bunch of baseball teams and some other ones, so they had a bunch of cool ones that day. Uh, so this sold for, there's 10 of them here, sold for $24.99. So I got $2.50 per golf ball, paid like $0.33 cents per golf ball. So that's a good sale. It's over a pound, so I'm probably going to put this into a, pat, a padded flat rate mailer, ship it out. I don't know, are they still $8.30? I don't think I've shipped one of them recently, so I still, I still think they're $8.30. All right, next. Next the next item has another story to it. I told you, everything has a story today. Uh, I got the JSA authentication sticker to go with this autograph hockey puck. This is Mike Modano. Yeah, one of the greatest U.S.-born hockey players ever. Uh, played with the Dallas Stars, and uh, this is autographed here. A friend of mine got this autograph for me. Here's the story. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. So this friend of mine, he works for uh, basically, a, I won't say a body shop, but he works for, like, the insurance company. He gets sent out to evaluate your car after you've been in an accident, do the estimate, and send it to the company, and blah, blah, blah. It's amazing how many athletes he has run into working for these companies throughout the years. He has gotten me many autographs from many different players. He'll call me during the day, hey, you got any cards of this guy or that guy? Because he just happened to do the estimate on their, their car. And Mike Madonna was one of the guys that, that he did the estimate for. Uh, so yeah, he got this puck signed for me. He actually got me like two or three pucks signed and a couple of cards as well. I think this is the last item I had. So yeah, I got authenticated by JSA. Not that I needed authentication, but a lot of people out there on eBay, when they buy something, they, they want that ease of mind that somebody verified that it is legit. Uh, I had it in my store for 50 bucks and a 10% off offer. So you'll see it as 50 on the pop-up. Sold it for $45. Now, I'm going to tell even a bigger story about this one, or a longer story, it's a bigger story. Uh, how I met this friend of mine. So yeah, this friend, he's Bobby. So if anybody's watching this video that knows me and knows Bobby, uh, shout out to Bobby. Uh, he is from Buffalo, New York. You guys all know that I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Go Bills. Uh, so yeah, he used to buy cards from me off of eBay and stuff. So one time I sent a package back to him and all I did is I wrote, go Bills on the outside of the package. Uh, he replied back, how really are you a Bills fan, blah, blah, blah. And we just got chatting back and forth through emails or through eBay's uh, messaging, however we did it. And he just happened to mention to me that he was moving out to Arizona. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Cool. And I kind of left it at that. Well, one day during a storm, my wife's car had a branch fall on it. So we had to take it to the body shop. You see where this is going? It happened to go to the place where he worked. And we met in person that day, and literally we've been really good friends since. So it's kind of crazy how someone from New York moves out here uh, many years ago. Yeah, and just threw a tree branch falling on a car and randomly going to his body shop that now you know, me and him have been friends. And we've done lots of business together. We've been done lots of uh, stuff. He's the one that I actually do all the consignment items for that I talk about, where I do these little... Uh, he brought me a few more the other day, where I do these little bat decal stickers. I sold the a bat, a uh, game used player bat the other day for him that sold for like $350 and we split the money from that. So we, we do, a, we help each other out quite a bit. All right. I told you that was going to be a long story. I've told that story once, I think before, but it was probably a year or two or three ago, you know, so if you're new to this channel, you've never heard it before. I think it's kind of a cool little story. 
But with sale, we're still talking about sales. I got to look over at the screen, see what else sold. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that, that. Okay. Well, let's show this. This was this was my I think my biggest sale of the week, other than that bat that I sold for him. And this is another item that sold the same day. It's been crazy that I had some of these same day sales. Uh, so again, we'll talk about my route, how my route goes to certain stores in the valley. And on Tuesday, I take my daughter to her clarinet tutor or lesson. She gets a little half hour extra lesson after school on Tuesday. So I took her to her lesson. And when that happens, there's a Goodwill about a mile or two away. I go to that Goodwill, hit that, come back, pick her up. It usually works out perfect time wise. And this particular Goodwill, I'm not telling you where it is, just in case you're local, I'm not going to give it away. It's not like it's a secret, but it's just one that's been really producing for me lately. So I like going to that store at least a couple times a week and always on Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, there was a card out there of, of their like electronic section stuff, and it was just sitting there. So it had been out there for quite a while, but this one item was still sitting there. I walked up to the cart, and I was amazed that it was sitting on there because it looked like this, and there was I saw these straps on it. So instantly I thought that it was like a sink or a faucet or something like that because a lot of those products put these little straps around the boxes. Uh, but no, I looked it up, and it's a hot water recirculating system. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's in the box. It was priced $9.49, so it was priced cheap. Uh, and of course, there's a barcode on the side. I scanned the barcode, and when I saw the prices, I was like, Phew! crazy how high the prices were. Uh, kind of all over the place because there were used ones. There was a new open box, a lot of stuff like that. So prices up to like $200. Most of them were $100 to $150. Price is up to $200. So mine's brand new in the box, still has the straps on it. Now, this item was also available to list on Amazon. So I did list it on both sites, listed it a little bit higher on Amazon. It did not sell on Amazon, sold on eBay. And actually, I'm kind of glad that it sold on eBay because I think the fees are a little bit less and I can charge appropriate shipping. So it sold for $180, $179.99. Yeah, $9 into $180 and it sold the same day again. I wish I could find tons of stuff like this out there, but you know it's few and far between. But obviously, these these finds are out there. Uh, so yeah, and a, a Watts hot water recirculating system. So if you ever find these, even used out of the box, man, these things these things are good money, and the sell through rate is fantastic. So yeah, once that sale came in, I instantly ended my my listing over on Amazon. Make sure that I didn't double sell that because honestly, that has happened in the fat in the past where an item sold so quickly that I did sell them on both sites. And usually I will still ship it on eBay uh, or whoever's order came in first. I try to honor that. So uh, we'll always work it out. I've never had a problem canceling an order. I just send a buyer message that says, hey, sorry, don't have the extra inventory. It sold on another site before I could cancel this listing. And honestly, I've never had anybody complain. Just be honest with people. Tell them what happened. And uh, they're pretty cool about it. Last items. They're down here on the ground. Come over here and get them. Boom, football helmets. Yeah, I sold uh, six items. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six items yesterday, and two of them were football helmets. So I had gone through quite a dry spell not selling any football helmets. I think I went probably a month-ish without selling any helmets, and then I sold one earlier this week, and then I sold two here today. Very different helmets. Uh, let's go for the cheap one first. This one here, this is Adams. Adams is the cheapest brand helmet that you can find out there. I'm not paying over $10 for an Adams helmet unless it is crispy clean. Uh, this one here, not crispy clean. So first up, look at all these scuffs and scrapes on the front. We still have a team logo sticker on the side. I tried to take it off, but a lot of times it leaves residue or a shadow. So I just leave the other one on. And this one doesn't even have ear pads inside. No chin strap. People would say, oh, there's no ear pads, no chin strap. I'm not going to buy it. It's too beat up. So this one, I think it was around five or six bucks for this helmet sold for $29.99. So yeah, $30. That's about the lowest price that I'll ever sell a helmet for. But it still sold relatively quickly. This helmet is not in great shape. I am assuming that someone's going to buy this and customize it and do something special with it. Go out on eBay and look for full-size, customized, unique helmets. There's a lot of them out there. There's some pretty cool stuff out there. Uh, that people do so uh yeah still got 30 dollars for it the next one's a little better and actually i just listed this one yesterday if you watched my video on monday i talked about helmets and i pointed i said i still got one helmet to list down there i listed it and uh it sold within 24 hours i didn't think it was going to sell that fast but i've had a lot of fast selling stuff recently so that's good this one again 
Look how scuffed up it is on the front. This is not crispy clean. This thing is pretty darn beat up, but it really doesn't matter because people fix these up and reuse them. Uh, inside though, was pretty nice. The inside, the padding was all good. It came with the, the original chin strap, so I will go ahead and keep it. If this is a Rydell helmet, this is a Rydell chin strap, it was in good shape. It wasn't all gross and stuff, so I'll go ahead and, and keep it in there. Uh, this helmet was from 2012, so it has passed what we'll call its expiration date. Helmets are supposed to have, only have a 10-year usage, so if it was two, 2012, last year was the last year you're supposed to use this helmet, and it would have had to been like recertified, I think. Uh, either way, still sold for 50 bucks, $49.99 plus shipping. Yeah, it didn't matter that it was this messed up. It didn't matter that it was past the date. I know I talk about football helmets a lot, but they, they're such fantastic money. And that's going to lead us into the next part of today's story long video that we're doing. Uh, the Tale of Three Helmets. I don't know why I'm calling it the Tale of Three Helmets. It's only because I listed and bought three helmets here over the last couple of days. I just listed these helmets this morning. So the views that you'll see when I show the listings are, are fairly low still, but they did get some views right away. Uh, so they are all back here, and I went out thrifting yesterday, and luckily I bought a decent amount of stuff to keep me busy today while I'm stuck at home, and I bought three very different helmets. So first up, we're going to go with your standard one that you find, Rydell football helmet. Uh, this is an extra small. Extra small is actually a really good size to find because you usually find larges and mediums, the smalls, and especially the extra smalls sell pretty well, and you can usually get just a little bit more for them. Now, this one wasn't too bad. It does have some scuffs and scrapes on the front. And, you know, again, if you know football, that's where y'all are banging heads together. But again, the inside on this thing was pretty darn clean. So uh, pretty happy about that. Kept the chin strap with it. It's the original Rydell chin strap. You got the black face mask with the black chin strap. So that kind of looked kind of cool. I thought it'd be good to keep it together. I think I listed this for $60. You'll see it in the pop-up. I, th I think it's 50 or 60 bucks. Maybe 50. I don't know. I'm not going to go look it up again. Uh, so yeah, that was the first one. This one was $8.49. These two were both at the same store, $8.49 each. Uh, so yeah, that was a good one. And the funny thing with these two is it was at a store that usually isn't very good. I only stop there if I have a lot of extra time that day or I just happen to be in the area. I stop at that particular store. It's kind of a dirty store. It's not in the greatest area. So, uh, you know, I've had some good finds there in the past, so I still go to it from time to time, but it's just not on my regular route. This next one, you see the big X, that's Zenith, X-E-N-I-T-H, Zenith, uh, right there. Uh, this one, I didn't know exactly what the model number was or the model name. A lot of times in inside them is where you'll find like a sticker that says the model name. Sometimes they'll have one on the back that says it. This one didn't have it, I think, because they probably painted this helmet. They might have painted over that sticker or something. So usually what I'll do is I'll go on to eBay and I'll put Zenith football helmet. In this case, this one I think was a medium and I'll put medium and I'll start looking at other people's descriptions and I'll try to find the model name. This one, this brand only has a couple different models and uh, this I believe was the X2E. Uh, you see, I left the stickers on the side again. A lot of times I'll peel these off, just make them look a little bit cleaner, but they had another one on the back and when I took it off, it left a lot of residue. So I just left these other two let uh, whoever buys this one uh, deal with it. Now, this is a little bit newer helmet. This is 2013 initial season, but being 2023, going into 2024, this helmet technically isn't going to be able to be used anymore. So again, this will be probably a restoration project for somebody or they'll use it for the parts. I think I listed this for the same price. I think uh, $49 or $59.99. You'll see in the pop-up. But the last one, that was the gem of the group. And honestly, I didn't even really realize it at the time. I thought it was from a local high school. Uh, so let me get that helmet. It's back here. And this is a Shutt brand helmet, S-C-H-U-T-T. -T. Now, when I saw this logo, this H, I thought this was for the local Hamilton Huskies football team. I've sold a lot of local t schools. I've sold their football helmets in the past. And that's what I thought this one was at first. But it wasn't until I actually started processing it, taking the price sticker off and stuff, that I realized, oh, that's not Hamilton. That's Hawaii. That's Hawaii school, the Hawaii Fighting Rainbows or whatever they call themselves. Uh, yeah, so there's the little stripe down the middle. This is a shut 
Air Helmet. This is the Pro Air 2. So much better helmet than the other one. So this one is in pretty nice. I honestly don't think this was ever used for play. It does have a little bit of wear, but I think it's just from being banged around, maybe at Goodwill uh, in their bins or whoever had this helmet first. Uh, no chin strap, but it is a really nice helmet. And the initial season on this, I think it was inside somewhere. It was like 2018. So this is a pretty new helmet. Went out, check out the Pro 2 out on eBay, look for a Hawaii helmet. And there's only one sold Hawaii helmet, but it had the official like college NCAA logo on the back here. This one does not have that, but I still price it at the same price. I still price it at $200. Now, this helmet was $1,449. That's kind of at the high end of what the stores out here price them at. I don't think I've paid too much more than that, but obviously for this one, I would have just knowing that it was a little bit better helmet. But yeah, I priced it at two hundred dollars, fourteen forty nine. Hopefully into two hundred. There's already a wa some watchers and stuff on it on the listing, so hopefully we'll get that two hundred dollars in the not too distant future. So yeah, that ends the story of the three different helmets. So I got five helmets down here on the floor. Three I listed this morning. Those got to go out into the garage. The two that I pulled out of the garage that I got to ship out today. Now they ship really easy. Twelve by twelve by twelve box. You throw some extra paper in there. Usually I'll cut the box down an inch because you have an extra inch at the top that you can fold down, make it a 12 by 12 by 11 boxes, which is why I use the eBay boxes. That's usually what I use my coupon for each year is to get each year, each quarter is to get those 12 by 12 by 12 boxes because they have different little sort of like pre-cut lines on those boxes, makes it nice and easy to, uh, to measure and cut down. And now I'm going to talk about some stuff that I found while I've been out thrifting here this week that I'm going to list on eBay, or maybe I've already listed it. This one I haven't. I got to do a little more research on this. Now, I wasn't sure what exactly this was uh, until I got really close. I just saw this on the shelf at a Savers. I was at the Savers the other day, or yeah, Wednesday. It was part of my uh, my Scottsdale run. I hit that Savers way out there in Scottsdale first. For any of you locals, I'm always out there. I should say always. I'm usually out there on Wednesday mornings. But yeah, I saw this. It was just a Carrera Red Bull racing car. And then I got closer and saw right down here that it's had that right there, like one, what is it? One 43rd electric slot car. So it wasn't just like a little die cast car. This is a slot car. I, again, I got to do some more research. So it was $4.99 at the store. Just checked a quick glance out there on eBay. It looks at, like it's about a $30 item. So at first I thought it was just an item that I would put into my collectibles booth for like 12 bucks until I got a little closer and saw that was that slot car. Slot car stuff is pretty popular. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get at least 30 bucks for this. I haven't done the full research. I literally did 15 seconds of research uh, when I went off camera there for a second. So uh, pretty good. Five into 30-ish. We'll, we'll do that. These two were also at the Savers. And these are the ones that are kind of a wild card. Uh, I've been checking VHS sections a little bit more for new sealed stuff. I've been checking prices on Amazon, checking prices on eBay. And for always looking for the oddball stuff. And I saw these purple clamshells and I saw that it was Barney, but it's not just Barney. This is Barney in Spanish. We got the Circo or the circus one and we got uh, his sl Barney sleepover, which is Pijamada. I know, God, I, I'm sorry if you speak Spanish. That's probably a uh, horrible. I, the J is probably pronounced like an H, Pijamada. I don't know, you all can correct me down there. Uh, but yeah, so I found these two Barney VHS tapes. What's kind of cool about these two is they're a white VHS tape inside. So did a little search out there on eBay, and surprisingly, these tapes were selling for 20-ish dollars a piece. Now, there are some out there that are listed for like $200. No, I don't think anybody's spending $200 for a used Barney VHS tape, even in Spanish. So the, there's a lot on the sell, on the sold, on the sells. Uh, uh, I'd check through Terra Peak, check the prices over the past couple of years. There's, I think, like 20 some sold. Most of them are on that $20 range. There's not a lot out there. One of these, there was none of. Uh, the pajama one, there was none out there of. And there was only one sold of this. So I think these are fairly rare. I hate using that word, but fairly rare VHS tapes in Spanish of Barney. So I placed mine at 35 bucks. Will I get 35? Probably not. But, you know, it, it's a starting point. Worst case is I can send offers out to people. I usually start at like 10%. Once I see some offers start rolling in after a couple weeks, I usually don't sell, send offers on items in the first couple weeks. Uh, wait a couple weeks before I do that. 
But if I could even get twenty dollars a piece for those, uh, they paid two ninety nine each. Now I did use a uh, savers coupon, which I think is twenty percent off. So do a little math. Uh, we'll just say I pay about two fifty a piece for them. I can get twenty piece. That's that's a pretty good, pretty good little flip for some VHS tapes. It's funny how VHS has kind of become popular again to collect. Think of how much money you could have made if like 10, 15, 20 years ago you started saving up some of these VHS tapes that people are going crazy for. You could be a kajillionaire right now, I think. All right, what else? What else am I talking about today? Stuff from my booth. Uh, I'm, my, my clock, I'm at the 26 minute mark. I, I got to fill up at least 30 minutes of time. I said this is going to be a long video. Uh, maybe I, we can even get it to 45 if I talk long enough and keep going. I mean, I still got to ship orders. It's 1047 right now, but I got all afternoon. I got really nothing to do after I after I get these orders shipped and packed up. It's not like I'm going to the post office. It's not like I'm going out thrifting today. I'm not going to any state sales. I told you, my wife took my car. Uh, so yeah, we're going to show you what uh, I'm taking out to my collectibles booth tomorrow. So Friday, that's usually what I do in the morning is I drive to the other side of town, go to my collectibles booth, and then hit a few stores on the way back on my little back home route on Friday. So uh, first couple things. I have sold so many of these. Yeah. These are fart blasters from the Minions movies and uh, Despicable Me. Uh, these sell almost instantly when I put them in my booth. I put them in there for $10. That's about what they go for on eBay. It's about $10 plus shipping. You'll see some people sell them at five. You'll see some people sell them at 15. About 10 bucks. So as long as I can get them for $3 and less at the store, I'll go ahead and buy them. Probably half the time they work, meaning they already have batteries in them. So when I test them in the store, they work. And a couple times in the store, you'll, you'll pull the trigger and it'll just give you a quick little light up here with a small little clicky noise. All that usually means is that it needs new batteries. And then it's an easy $10. I know it's not like you're getting rich off these things, but it keeps people buying stuff from my booth and that's what I want. So I found two of these. I think there was actually one in my booth right now. So uh, I'll price them and I'll take them out there. If that other one sold, then I'll put a, a new one out there in the booth uh, for sale because I'm sure some kid wants a fart blaster for Christmas, even if it's used. It's not like you can go buy this at the store anymore. All right, what else am I taking? I found this beer sign down here. This was four bucks at a Goodwill. It's just an IPA, I believe. Yeah, uh, Hop Head Red. Never heard of it, but it's a metal. It's an actual beer sign that they would would have uh, given like a bar or a liquor store to put up in there. So uh, Green Flash Brewing. I don't know where that's from. I don't know if this is a local one or not. Either way, it'd probably be, I don't know, 12 or $15 at my booth for that go back here for a little more. All right. Now I've talked about Amazon. Oh, story time. Uh, why I haven't been selling as much on Amazon. Cause it's just, it can be really frustrating to sell on Amazon because you can have a bunch of items listed on Amazon and you'd be like, all right, well, why am I not getting sales? And you go check your inventory and all of a sudden you see that 10% of your items have disappeared out of your for sale items. And that's, that happens quite a bit. So this was one of the items. I was looking on the shelf the other day uh, and saw that this game, this Risk Lords of the Ring Trilogy Edition, was not listed on Amazon anymore. And the price had come down quite a bit, so I didn't even want to relist it. I think the cheapest one was like $18 plus shipping. So it would make next to nothing if I sold it on Amazon. So uh, at this point, I went ahead and sealed it up, used my uh, shrink wrap machine, and I'm uh, going to take it out to my uh, booth, and I'll put it out there probably for... 15, 17, 50, something like that. A little under 20. I do pretty good with games like this when I put them out there as long as they're like themed like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, superheroes, that type of stuff. I've done pretty well with them. And what else is back here? I just found this little puzzle. Little Green Bay Packers puzzle. Still new and sealed. It's a pretty cheap one. It's only 150 pieces, but it was like $2.49. I almost always use a coupon. You got I shouldn't even have to say it anymore that I used a coupon when I was at Goodwill. Uh, so we'll say I pay $2 for it. What is it going to be? I don't even think it's worth 10 bucks, but, you know, it's Christmas time. Maybe some someone will get that for a, a Packers fan. I get out there tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the 15th, so we got about 10 more days before Christmas. So I expect that this next 10 days out of my booth, hopefully, uh, will be a little bit better. I'm going to try to take as much stuff as I can out there this week and try to get it all packed up. And hopefully it'll create some extra sales. 
What else is back here? We have an ASU Sparky Bobblehead. Now, the Sparky Bobbleheads usually do pretty good. $20. It's almost a guaranteed $20 sale. You can put them out on eBay about the same price. They made a few different ones. They made a baseball one, a basketball one. Those ones usually go for a little bit more. This is just the standard one. But what always happens with these is the pitchfork always breaks. And this one actually is partially broken. It's not fully broken. It just bent a little bit. So uh, also put that out there. $20. It'll be good to go. Uh, I did finally sell a couple of these out at my booth. I, I bought these at a little local little at the local Goodwill, the one closest to my house. They had four of them that day, and I think they were like nine dollars a piece before coupon. So I bought them all. Uh, it's this really cool foam Arizona Cardinals logo. I thought about putting one of them up here. I got a cool spot up there. I thought it would fit. I am a Cardinals fan as well, just being locally, but. I can't have everything up in the room. I can't keep everything. Uh, I have Buffalo Bills. So I kind of have a little Buffalo Bills corner over there. Here, let's see. Let's see. I don't know if over here. Let's look around. Uh, look. So I got a banner right there. Oh, where ban a banner and a couple of helmets up over there. That's really all I have for Buffalo Bills stuff. So if I found one of these of a Buffalo Bill, that would actually go great up above that banner. But I don't want to mess up the room with Cardinals and Bills. I got. I got brood. I got ten. I can't have everything. Either way, uh, I had found four of these. Two of them sold finally out of my booth. I didn't want to take all four at once. Uh, so I need to price these and take these in there. And uh, I priced them at 20 bucks a piece. So I paid $9 before coupon and sell them for 20 So I'll probably netting 10 bucks or so. Thought those were pretty cool. Oh, what else? What else is going out there? Drink break. Right now I got a bunch of small things up here. And I think I also showed you last... We, what I do is these little bags of Lego. I bought a big tub of Lego, and it was already nice and sorted and clean and all that. I don't like buying big bulk things of Lego if they're going to be dirty and have crayons and other parts, because I don't want to have to sort out the non-Lego pieces that are in there. There's a lot of people that get upset if you sell them a bag of Lego, and it has a bunch of the other brands in there. They want actual Lego brands. So that's what this is. Two pounds of Lego. This little thing is two pounds of Lego. I weighed it. Sell it for 10 bucks. I had eight of these bags out of that little tub that I bought. So I took a bunch of them last week, put them in my booth, and I'll take these with me tomorrow of those sold, and I'll have some more to, to fill in in its spot. So have those. I've slowly been taking these little Yankees medallions in. A lot of different teams and such have done these medallion collections. So let's see if I can get out of the glare. So you can see it was marked $2.99. These were things done by like the newspaper. You would get this little fold out binder. And then like each week you could get different players and then put them into the little binder. But if you look at the, I had the whole set of these. If you look out on eBay, the whole set sells for maybe 20 to $30 when it does sell, which is fairly rare. Uh, so I've just been selling these medallions individually for the $3 a piece. Actually, I think I sold one of them, uh, the Mickey Mantle I sold for $5. And then there's a couple other players I might price a little bit more just because they're better players. Uh, so I've sold all the ones that I had so far. I have a few more to take out there at three bucks a piece. So I would definitely look for more of these, but I don't, would never sell them out on eBay. I would probably just take them to my collectibles booth, especially when the teams like the Yankees. The last one I had was the Chicago Bears. So uh, it's not just baseball. The football teams do it as well. And I think they're going to sell pretty well. I keep them going out there at three bucks a piece. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, along with the Yankees there. I, this was just a random item. I, we had a sports auction last weekend. And... Uh, this was just in one of the boxes, just as old Yankees baseball ornament. So I'll take that out there, throw it out there for a couple of dollars. Maybe someone will buy it. Uh, a beer tap that I found at a thrift store for two bucks. Nitro Chub Scotch Ale. Yeah, never heard of it. Looked it up on eBay. It doesn't sell for a whole lot. And it's got a couple little scuffs on it too. So I'll we'll throw it out there for 10 bucks. Hopefully that'll sell. We have a couple Star Wars ships. These were in a hanging bag at a Goodwill with some other stuff. I, the other stuff wasn't uh, as good as I had hoped, so these were the only two items that I was able to salvage out of that thing. And this one's a fairly cheap. This is a little plastic TIE fighter. I think this is Poe's uh, X-Wing, and you got BB-8 in the back right there. So we got that little X-Wing, and then we got this little metal Millennium Falcon. This one's a little bit better quality, but again, I'm not going to get a ton for these. Maybe, maybe five to seven bucks a piece for those. What else is back here? I found a little bag with some hockey pucks at the thrift store as well. They had four hockey pucks in there and it was priced $4. So I paid a dollar a puck. I have a bunch of these puck cubes. 
I have a bunch of used ones, but I have also have a case of brand new ones. So when I do find uh, hockey pucks, I can put them in these cubes that definitely display better at my booth and and uh, get a little more form. So we got the St. Louis Blues. We have the New Jersey Devils. The Quebec Nordiques. And then we got the New York Islanders as well. So paid a buck for them, and then the, these will be $10 each at my booth. $9.95 is usually what I do. Again, I, I've gone back and forth whether I should just price some items at $10 or $9.95 to try to play the mind trick and make, make people think it's cheaper. I actually do price some stuff still at $10, and then like those, $9.95. I don't know why. Does it make a difference? I don't know. All right, these were, these were really cool back uh, when they put these out. This is from 2003. This is from a football product. I think you got, when you got a box of cards, I think you got one of these box toppers in there. And this is Emmett Smith when he played with the Arizona Cardinals. I think he was here for just one year. Uh, it's a little bit beat up. It's a little bit damaged. I bought this at the local auction, at that sports auction. It was thrown into a, one of the little boxes. Uh, I think I paid like $2 for it. So I'll still put it in my booth probably for 8 bucks, maybe 10 I don't know. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of Cardinals fans out there, and where my booth is, it's not too far away from the, where the Arizona Cardinals stadium is, so that kind of helps. Uh, speaking of VHS, like I did earlier with Barney, I always buy this one anytime I find it. The Rugrats VHS in the orange clamshell, and it's got the orange cassette with it. Kind of iconic. People that are big fans of the Rugrats, it doesn't sell for a whole lot. It'll go in my booth for $5, but if I can pick it up for a dollar, throw it in my booth for $5, uh, i will definitely do that. I have been selling a few VHS in my booth recently. Uh, the one that I always go for is Space Jam. If I find a good condition Space Jam, the one with Michael Jordan with it, that one sells pretty good. I've sold that one a couple times and a couple other ones as well. So uh, yeah, I've been selling VHS too. A couple more things. Here's the next one. I'm going to take this autogra autograph basketball out there. This is a Phoenix Suns autograph ball, probably from the early 2000s. Uh, if I remember correctly, who's on this one? I think it has Sean Marion, it might have Penny Hardaway, Jason Kidd, and a bunch of other people that were on the team at the time. No COA with it. I actually found this at a thrift store. Yep, I found it's amazing how many autograph items I found at thrift stores. Uh, but I didn't have a cube to put it in, and I just picked this up at the sports auction. Paid three dollars for this. So uh, the ball I only paid a few dollars for. I'll probably price this at fifty bucks. Uh, it's about the right price for a non-certified basketball of the players that are on here, about 50 bucks. Now, why don't I get it certified? Because for team balls, they charge a ridiculous amount and I wouldn't recoup that money. They would probably charge me somewhere between 50 and hundred dollars to authenticate this ball with the autograph. So yeah, it's not worth it at all. You only do that with team balls. If you have a ball that's worth hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of dollars. So uh, I will take that out there. Now this case does open up pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I have this stretch wrap like this, and I will wrap around the edges so people can't open up the case and take the ball out. Now the ball is gonna move around in here. It's not gonna stay nice and centered, but if I don't wrap it, it will get opened. It will probably be sitting on the floor next time that I go in there if someone does it by. Yeah, that's what happens out there. I, I'm, I'm gonna do a video about the terrible things that people do at my collectibles booth. It's, it's one of the videos upcoming. <laughs> Okay, here's the last item that I'm going to show you. I bought a frame. Yeah, it's an 11 by 17 frame. I know you're like, Mike, big whoop. It's a frame. Paid uh, th $3.49 for this flimsy, flimsy ass frame. Uh, with a coupon, of course. So uh, the reason why I bought it, uh, I'm always looking for these type of frames because I have a bunch of this size items that display much better and will sell for more if I have them in a frame. Uh, these were items given out at the baseball game. So this was for Randy Johnson's uh, number retirement for the Diamondbacks. So his number 51 was retired. This, If this sits in my booth, it's going to get all bent up and damaged. I don't even want to put it in there. But if I put it in this frame, I can probably get 12 to $15 for it. There's some other ones. They did it for Steve Nash. So I got the Steve Nash one. Ring of Honor induction. And I never know which way to display it. If you want the Nash 13, I think this is the better way to do it. You got the ring when he went to the Ring of Honor. So I got that one. Dan Marley, they retired his number nine. So I got this one, Thunder Dan Marley. Then these are the ones I've gotten autographed. And I used to have back here on my wall a couple of these, but they would always reflect the light. And I always didn't like how they showed in the video. It made it distracting, I think. 
Uh, so I have a couple of these framed. I don't even remember where I put them, honestly. And here's, uh, I got a couple more of these. This is one they did for Luis Gonzalez, but I got this one autographed by him. When his number was retired, and this one here as well. So uh, he put 2001 World Series game winning hit inscription on there. So got those two autographed. And every time I find one of these frames, I go and grab one of those and I take it to my booth and it usually sells pretty quickly. So that's what I'm going to do this time. I'll probably take the Randy Johnson one this time because the Diamondbacks had a good playoff run, go to, went to the World Series and lost. But there's a lot of people looking for Diamondback stuff right now. All right, did I make this video long enough? I hope you, I'm curious how many people stayed for the whole thing. So if you stayed for the whole thing, put it down in the comments. Mike, I watched the entire video. It was amazing. Thanks for making this long video. This is the kind that I like. Uh, I wish you could make two hour videos or just put your live stream on all day. Okay, you don't have to put all that in the comments, but uh, I appreciate y'all guys. You have no idea. We're getting to the end of the year and I'm going to do some year wrap up stuff and uh, I've hit some goals. I've missed some goals. We've had a pretty good year overall. Uh, and thanks, everybody. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I, I can't ramble on. I may, if I ramble on, I'll hit 45 minutes on my timer, but I'm sure I'll edit some time out of that. I don't know. We'll see how it works. But that's it for today. It's Thursday, so I hope you all have a great weekend coming up. Christmas is coming up and uh, all that. So uh, I keep rambling. Just end the video, Mike. Yep, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.